water a day? No. Go to any culture around the world. They don't drink eight glasses of water a day. I know people live to 100, 110 years old. I've traveled around the world 27, over 27 times studying indigenous cultures or enjoying the indigenous cultures. My definition of indigenous culture is one that doesn't have TV yet. And once they don't have TV, they still have their old customs. They don't drink water all the time. I'm not telling you not to drink water, but I'm telling you that what will really hydrate your cells is learning to stop eating so much sugar. Sugar dehydrates your cells. And what is it that actually hydrates your cells? Fat. All that fat on your body is filled with water. When your body uses fat for energy, it fuels the brain. And your brain gets 20 times more energy than if you're burning sugar. The difference is, is when you're burning sugar, you get quick energy, like kindling wood. But as with kindling wood, what happens after a few minutes? It burns out. When you're burning fat, it's like a big log. Once you get your body into the fat burning mode, then you have 20 times more energy. And when your body makes energy from fat, most people don't know the byproduct is water. The body converts all that stored fat into water right inside the cell and hydrates your cells. The most powerful way to hydrate your cells is to burn fat. Now I'm in 100% fat burning up here. I've trained myself. I train people to be in fat burning. Why I need water is I've been spraying it out. I'm perspiring it out. So I need to replenish. So if you actually get rid of the water through perspiration, or jogging or exercise, then you need to replenish with more water. But if you're, if you're sitting at a de desk all day drinking down water, you know what what's happening with that water? It goes right in your body and it leaches out minerals and goes right through. So you drink it and you go to the bathroom and pee out minerals. And what are those minerals for? Those are the minerals that are necessary to make brain chemicals. Now the mineral, the brain chemical that women run out of faster than men is what? And why would they run out of it faster? Because we're all under stress during the day at times. But women have eight times more blood flow to the emotional center of the brain. And so their brain's always having to make more and more serotonin. Not only do men have more stable blood sugar to make serotonin if they run out, men generally don't run out of serotonin. They can under a lot of stress. Long before men run out of serotonin, they run out of dopamine. Dopamine isn't as well known, but it, it's, a, it's now used by the drug companies for children with ADD. ADD, ADHD. Who knows somebody who's ADD or ADHD? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So I was studying this new crisis that was happening about 15 years ago. And found that with children who had ADD, they did tests on them and found they all had low dopamine levels. Now, dopamine is a brain chemical that makes you interested in something. So right now everybody's, if you're interested in what I'm saying, let me know. Wow. Now if you're, is there somebody that's like really, really, really interested, let me know. Or is it a she? I can't see that far. It's a she. She has got dopamine off the chart. Do you see what she did? She stood up. When somebody's got a lot of dopamine, what do they do? They jump. So I ask you again and give you permission to have more dopamine. What was the question? If you're interested in what I'm saying, let me know. That is dopamine. Now, a lot of times when guys are in an audience, one guy stands up, all the rest go, oh, he's standing up, I don't need to. <laughs> he does it for me. Why? Men are always, dopamine gives us energy. It's excitement. It's what Harv's got you doing when you're dancing. You know when you're dancing and listening to the music, you know what's happening in your body? Your body's starting to go into fat burning. Dancing puts your body into fat burning. Sitting still, you're in sugar burning. 
unless you're in a very high meditative state where you're pumping out serotonin for another reason. But generally speaking, you're doing work and you're sedentary, your body goes into sugar burning. But when you are dancing, you're in fat burning. Why is it? Rhythmic movement. But I want you to know that if you're overweight, and for some people that might be a lot of pounds. I was talking to one woman, I said, how much pounds would you like to lose? She said, 60 pounds. Really? You always have to have look stunned, guys. You know, you look like you only need five would be fine with me, but. <laughs> she said, she said, I went on a diet, I lost 32 pounds, but then a few months later I gained it all back. That's called yo-yo dieting. Who's heard of that or experienced that? This is a real tragedy that happens today where people going on dieting. Because when you eat less food, you have less minerals in your brain to make serotonin. And so when you don't have the minerals in your brain to make serotonin, your brain tries really, really hard. And so it's just give me a lot of sugar. And as soon as you eat sugar, your body goes into sugar burning. And then once again, you get exhausted. And what happens to poor women, it's very sad. You see, men, we're a whole different physiology. We have plenty of serotonin, but we run out of dopamine. Dopamine is that thing that makes you interested. And of course, when you're interested, you have more energy. Dopamine motivates you. It excites you. It's when the man's in love with you and he's dating you and romancing you for those first three years. His dopamines are on a high all the time. God gives you three years of free hormones. And then they start declining unless you learn how to build it up on your own. Now why does it you get these three years? Because one of the things that stimulates dopamine, that hormone in the brain, neurotransmitter in the brain that makes, that says, I'm interested, I'm interested. So you hear something new and different, what do you do? You get excited. If it's the same old thing, I heard it before. It takes about three years in a relationship before that new and different starts to wear off. So all you need to be is with a woman and she's new and different and that will stimulate dopamine. So you see these older guys and some girl walks by with a little flash, a little slit here, a little more cleavage here, bends over, whatever. <laughs> Every guy in the restaurant's like, what was that? <laughs> see, we've seen all that before, but not on her. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be different. I don't know. Let me take another look. <laughs> it's pure the, it's pure physiology. The brain's seeing something new and different wiggling. I've never seen it like that before. And it triggers all kinds of signals like, I got a job to do. <laughs> even, that, even that poor guy sitting in the restaurant. And this girl, I, I saw this in Hawaii one time. And you know, they wear string bikinis in Hawaii. And, and they walk right through restaurants that way. So this girl's walking right through a uh, hot, hot, hot <laughs> string bikini. Walking to the restaurant. Every guy goes into this trance. Uh, and one guy I'm noticing, he's like looking at the peas on his plate. Just look at the peas. Don't look up. Don't look up. Don't look up. Because he knows if he looks up, he's in trouble. Because he's with his wife. And of course, he's getting more and more depressed because even as he's looking at the peas, he knows he's in trouble. Because his wife knows every other guy's looking. And I know you want to look. You're just not looking because I'm here. It's a no-win situation. Relationships need to be win-win. We need the understanding of each other, but in a respectful way. My wife and I resolve this. Well, you know, you work out ways you resolve stuff without making somebody shaming someone or making them wrong. The last thing you want to do, women is to make a man wrong for being attracted to another woman. I mean, this is like basic primitive physiology. Woman, I'm turned on. That's why he's turned on to you. And if you teach him by shaming him, you're not supposed to be turned on. You're not supposed to be interested. You're not even supposed to see her. Come on. You're teaching him, I'm not allowed to be turned on in the presence of my wife. And then when he's away from you, he's turned on. But he's not when he's with you. You don't want to condition him like that. Hey, I'll give you a simpler form of conditioning. Your husband's talking and you put your hand on him. You know what you do, well, at least my wife will do this when I'm talking too much. So what is that conditioning me to do? Stop talking when I'm around my wife. She touches me, I learn to not talk. I'm in her presence, I learn to not talk. 
I'm actually kind of reminded of that because Barbara's here. My wife never touches me to tell me not because I taught her that. Just don't touch me. If you have a no, just say, John, let's change the subject, whatever. But if you touch me when I'm sharing, I get the message, touching me means shut up. When Barbara and I used to teach together. <laughs> when I'd be talking, when it was her turn to talk, she'd always like affectionately put her arm around me. <laughs> not good programming. But we don't realize that at the time. So how do you resolve this sex thing? He's looking. What well, Bonnie said to me, she said, John, I understand you're a man. You're attracted to women. That's why you're attracted to me. That's right, honey. That's right. She said, I just don't want to be embarrassed when you're looking at other women. I said, I understand that. I understand that. What do you think we ought to do? And she said, well, I don't mind if you look. It's just when you go into a trance. <laughs> Another time she says, it's when you, I don't mind if you look. It's just when you start to drool. I said, I'm not drooling. Yes, you're drooling. It's an old man trait. So either you go into a trance. So I said, what are we going to do about that? I said, I told her, I said, honey, so all you have to do, whenever it's like getting to that point where I'm looking too much or it's too obvious, just elbow me. You have complete permission to elbow me anytime, but not in my ribs. So just elbow me like that. And then we have a fun, playful experience. So we worked that one out. But I want to give you the power of accepting and understanding our differences without judgment. So I was in Hawaii and that was just that experience. We'd worked it out. Actually, this is the story where we worked out in Hawaii. We were in this elevator and another one of these string bikini girls was in the elevator. Strikingly beautiful. Just strikingly feminine in every curve and every possibility was there. And, and everything was showing. I mean, it was just, and we're in a little elevator and she's standing right there and Bonnie's here and I'm here and there's another couple here. And she's like right there, you know, looking away so you can look. That's what they do. They always look away so you can look at them. <laughs> and of course, I'm looking down. I'm not, not going to look at this. is too close for me to look. So as we walked out, we, she got out on the same floor that we got out on. As we're walking out, this woman walks off and we stand there looking silently. <laughs> and Bonnie said to me, it's so sweet. She says, I want that body. And I was silent. <laughs> but you know what I thought? I want that body too. <laughs> but for a different reason. Now, I was then the next day I was teaching a seminar on sex and she was there and I told that story. And I didn't say that I thought to say, I just said, and of course, you know what I was thinking. And everybody laughed. And then I said it. I want that body too. And she, and I immediately took in what her reaction was. And she was on the floor laughing. She thought it was the funniest thing. I'm telling you, we had memorable, great sex that night. I mean, that was spectacular. <laughs> Why? Because I got this message, my sexuality's okay. So many times men feel shame by their sexuality. And women, you don't even know you're doing it. Often when he says, let's have sex. See, men, women can do more than one thing at a time. So they're busy. I mean, this one guy, we were doing funny stories from Australia on the radio when I was in Australia, having guys talk about their funniest experiences. One guy said, yeah, you're talking about these women that multitask. We were going to go into the bedroom to have sex and on the way she noticed a dirty glass and had to go back and clean it. <laughs> what man would ever notice a dirty glass and much less go back and clean it if you could go have sex? <laughs> men just don't think that way. But women, besides having this never-ending to-do list, they have this vision that sees everything. They feel everybody's needs. They feel this need, this need, this need, this need, this need. Now I know we're kind of not in a normal situation, but you have your purse there. I need a purse. I'm just looking at the front row. Is that your, oh, you, she already emptied it out for me. Uh, I actually was gonna do that, but that's okay. If you can put that back together. Uh, I already now know what's in that purse. So I wanna be surprised. That purse right there. Who's your, your brown purse? with the sunglasses on. Can I borrow your purse? Oh, please. You have the perfect purse. I'll be discreet. Okay. So, I, now I know this isn't your normal purse. How many women own more than three purses? Now, how many men have more than three purses? Okay, a few lucky guys. So, where's your purse? Let me see. Right there, this gentleman, right in my front row. No you carry a wallet? I do. Yeah, let me see your wallet. Sure. Can, you, can you bring the wallet up for me? Sure. 
This is Mars. This is Venus. <laughs> Women carry everything they could possibly need and everything anybody else needs. <laughs> Men carry the same thing every time. It's the bottom line. What's the point? What am I going to need? The essence. License, credit cards, maybe some cash. Definitely not a checkbook. <laughs> Most women carry their checkbook with them. I haven't used checkbooks in years. We'll give this back to there. Uh, of course, one thing often when in seminars I'll say, if it's a married couple, I'll pull her purse out. One of the first things I find, well, let me just see what's the first thing I find in yours. I'm going to be discreet. Okay, <laughs> this is private. Leave out the condom? Okay, not showing the condom. <laughs> now you reach into a woman's purse. You feel around, always, I've done this for years, the first thing I find, another purse. <laughs> One is not enough. She's got to have backup. She's got to have more. Oh, oh, excuse me. Pardon me. I'm so sorry. See how easy that was, guys? Women love it. You're always supposed to say, sorry, excuse me. It's just, let it breeze off you. Just get used to saying it. They love it. They feed on it. They'll make up things you should be saying you're sorry about if you don't say it enough. You got a quota. How many times do I have to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's look a bit for this in this purse. First thing you find, you open up the purse, credit cards. But like a man in his credit, but usually they have at least two to ten times more credit cards. Why? Because women will go to the store. My wife, we go to the Macy's. And they, oh, do you have our card? She's, and I go, no, I got my visa. That's all I need. My wife goes, oh, no, no, we could use your card. I'd love to have a relationship with you. I, I care about you. So she'll carry that little Macy's card around with her, knowing that she has a relationship with Macy's. Because <laughs> relationships, how many relationships do you have? What is the quality of your relationships? Do people care about you? Do you have help if you need it? All those things in her awareness stimulate serotonin. To men, who cares whether I, I got all this stuff or not? To me, it's just a lot, a lot of work. I don't need this to create serotonin. I got plenty of serotonin. That's the difference between men and women. Men, because their emotional center is not so active, they don't run out of it. And somehow, men even have, we make it 50% faster, and we store 50% more. It's like for those thousands of years we were out chasing those animals, we needed a backup of serotonin to remind us, why are you the one who's out there risking your life about to die? It was all that extra serotonin that gave us the courage to do that. But then we come home, we got plenty. Anyway, I'm gonna look at this watch. It, it, what I'm looking for here is the next little purse. The little purse within the little purse is a coin purse. <laughs> Women are proud of how many pennies they have in that coin purse. <laughs> we'll be at the counter and she'll say, do you have change? My wife delights. Yes! <laughs> I've got it right here. I know I've got it somewhere. She reaches down in one of her many purses to find another purse. She pulls it up. I've got it. I've got the exact change. She delights in bringing out that little change and puts it out there. And what, what man ever delighted? Is it raining? Oh, okay. I guess I'm under the lights. Okay. What man delights in going, do you have change? Oh, yes, I've got it. I've got it right here. I can find it for you. But see, this is a very important thing for men to understand about women, that little coin purse. Little things make a big difference. They look for the pennies. My wife steals. I'm a multimillionaire. My wife goes, a penny, a penny. <laughs> Sometimes I throw pennies around just to jump her mood. <laughs> oh, it's a lucky day. I found a penny. She's so sweet about that. Little things make a big difference. And men don't understand this. We do big things. Women like big things. But they also like little things. One of the most important things about creating romance. Guys will do their romance. Hey, we got flowers back here. We couldn't put them up too high because they were flying off because of the wind. Let me grab some flowers here. So, oh my gosh. It's a sign. I have to finish soon. So here we are with flowers. A guy goes, okay, I want to do something special for the sweetheart of my life. I'm going to bring her roses. See, on Mars, we keep score. We do it like in sports or in business. The bigger the thing you do, the more reward you get. So I'm thinking, I'll bring her two dozen roses. She'll smile bigger, right? That's not the way they are. On their planet, I got to get the wind out of my microphone. On their planet, I bring a dozen roses. 
A man thinks that's 12 points. I bring three dozen roses. He thinks that's 36 points. No. You bring however many roses you bring. She goes, oh, oh, roses, how beautiful. All that eight times more blood flow goes to her brain, goes, yay, delightful. I love it. How wonderful. You don't have to bring her 36 roses. You can get the same amount of points with one rose. So, man, if you want your 36 points, give her 36 roses in the next three months. Each time you bring a rose, she goes, oh, oh, that's wonderful. You remembered. But it can't be a formula. You can't have your assistant do it. Women have little antennas. They know who thought of it. You have to do it yourself. And it can't be on a routine. Otherwise, they know that you, don't, you weren't thinking of them. And of course, often we're not thinking of you because we think of one thing at a time. It's not our fault. We're just over here doing this one thing. And then we come home and you go, you forgot. You forgot the milk. Or we're going on some trip to South America this summer and she called me yesterday. I called her yesterday. And she said, did you talk to the travel, ag travel agent about the tickets? I, oh, I forgot. Oh, you forgot. I'm so sorry. How can I remember tickets for travel agent? I'm getting ready to give a big talk. I can't do those two things at once, but I try. And then I say, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot. Well, I'll try calling on Monday. And she very carefully goes, oh, yeah, sure. Like you'll remember. I'll tell your assistant. See, she understands men can do one thing at a time. She doesn't take it personally anymore if I forget to bring home the milk. But on the day when I did bring home the milk, oh, my God. She said, John, would you bring home some milk? I brought home some milk. I remembered. The next morning, the kids are having milk with their cereal. And they're all happy about it or something. And she says, well, we got milk. And you know why? And they go, why? Dad picked up the milk. And all the kids go, yay, Dad, the milkman. They're like, suddenly I got all this recognition for it. Anytime a man's successful, he remembers that. See, if you want men to remember things, women, remind him and point out when he's successful. If you point out when he fails... How do men cope with stress? They forget it. When a man's under stress, if I've got a lot of stress today, the way I cope with it, the stress is on the left side of my brain. I come home, I go to my cave, which means I get to go to the right side of the brain. And while I'm on the right side of my brain, the left side of the brain goes to sleep. And I can forget all my problems. Yes, women, we men can forget. You can't. And you can't imagine this. And we men can't imagine why you remember so much. It's our brains are literally different. Plato first discovered this. Plato said this is the point of recreational activity. His phrase for it was frivolous activity. The left side of the brain is serious. The right side is frivolous. If you're serious all the time, you have to be frivolous for a while to give that part of the brain a rest. But he was talking about men. Women can't do this. Woman's on her serious side of the brain. She goes to the frivolous side of the brain. She's still over there. This is brain scans. She's everywhere in the brain at the same time. She can't escape herself. All she can do is talk about what's bothering her, stimulate serotonin, which comes in and activates her memory to remember all the good things and let go of the memories of the negative things. And the last thing you want to do, men, is interfere with that process. And how does she produce more serotonin? Feed her and let her talk. And nod your head, make noises. Uh huh, uh huh. And when every cell in your body goes, I can't do this anymore, then you muster up your strength of manhood. <laughs> and you look at her and you say, Tell me more. <laughs> Tell me more. And she'll say, I'll be happy to. And now she pulls out something else. She's got so much stuff in that purse. And often when she's emptying out her hair, here's the comb. She's got like, you know, women spend so much more money on getting their hair cut. Did you know that? Did barbers actually charge women more for their haircuts? Because my barber had this little saying. He's saying, some haircuts are $40, others are 80. I said, what does that mean? He says, well, I can't say men's are 40s and women's are 80s, but women pay 80. And I say, why? That seems unfair. He says, no, it's not. They take twice as much time. And I said, it takes twice as much time to talk about, to cut it. He says, no, they take half the time telling you how to cut it. So they're going to charge more. Anyway, that's the comb. All these things women carry around with them. It's, they'll carry all these burdens with them. And they're happy to carry it. They don't mind it. They love taking on the problems of the world. But occasionally that purse gets a little too heavy. 
And at that moment, they want to come home to somebody who loves them, somebody who cares, somebody who understands, and they want to come to you. And basically, this is the metaphor. They want to say, oh, I'm carrying this heavy purse around. And the guy says, really? Well, what's in that purse? And she starts emptying out the purse. And he keeps saying, well, don't carry that. Well, if you don't like it, don't worry about it.